this man that I use Hoya lift to get him out, it not nah, accurate. And that's what I did. Hello guys, welcome, welcome back to the channel. If you are new today, my name is Cindy. How are you? Welcome, welcome to the channel. I am curious to know what the, the patient to nurse ratio is in Nigeria. It is terrible here. It is terrible over here. Please leave it in the comment section. Is there a policy on um, patient to nurse ratio? Uh, how how is that worked out um, over there? I used to work in a nursing home, and when I tell you, even as a nursing assistant, I have quit a job. I mean, I have repented. Okay, I am more matured and better now. I used to walk out of jobs. Like I went to work, and I had weighed this huge guy, okay, this patient, the patient was big. I finished weighing and then the nurse comes, oh, um, the dietitian doesn't like the weight, Some, there's something wrong with the weight, there's discrep discrepancy, um, the dietitian would like the patient weight. I was like, huh? This man that I use Hoya lift to get him out, it, nah, I quit. And that's what I did. I mean... I was young, I was new then, thank God none of them reported me. I had no clue, it was just too much, too overwhelming. Especially when you have one to like 20 patients, 30 patients as a nursing assistant. If you work night shifts, that means you're dead because you're literally gonna have the entire hall. So if there's 40 patients on that hall, it's for two people, 20, 20. So, God help you. The person that was supposed to work with you that night calls out. You have the entire hall by yourself. It is bad. I transitioned to a nurse working as a nurse on the floor, and it was the same thing. You, as a nurse, you have the entire un, entire hallway. So again, if it's like forty patients in that hall, in the nursing room, you have the entire hall. Okay, if you're lucky, again, you have two nurses. If someone calls out, you're on your own. Most times they'll give us uh, what is called a certified a CMA, certified medication assistant. Some of them are medication tech. They'll give the medications and you'll do like the IVs and the G-tube meds because they are not licensed to do give medication through G-tubes. And then you'll still have, to, you know, you have other things to do like your wound care, um, and stuff like that. If you don't have a, a medication assistant, that means you have to pass your medication that morning. And most times, the, you have medication morning, afternoon. You pass at 8 a.m. and you pass at 12 p at 12 noon. Okay. And the other person will come to relieve you at three o'clock. So that means you're gonna pass medication to 40 patients. How does that work? Being a nurse practitioner right now. I have had my patients that um, have been sick and had to go into the nursing home. And I'm telling you that so far I haven't had one. Okay, let me not say that. Maybe I've had one positive review. So far they're like, it's horrible. It's horrible. And this is something that I used to work as a nursing at, at a nursing home and I used to face this a lot and I kind of understand. I mean, I worked in nursing home for years. So when I first came here, I started in the, in the nursing home and I kind of got used to the culture, but I was never used to, I got used to, hmm, let me, let me pick my words right. I got used to the environment, but I wasn't, I never got used to the culture of or the way they do things i got used to the people to the patients i love my patient because of course they are older patients and they have stories and you know they tell you about their lives how they grew up i like hearing stories i got used to that environment and i stayed there for a really really long time and like i said i started as a nursing assistant i went on to become a wound nurse at some point and I went on to become um, um, nurse educator, infection control nurse. One thing that I refused to do was a director, being a director of nursing or a nurse unit manager. I was like, there is no way, no way you will get me to do that. Because I just saw 
them suffer. Like there was no work life balance at all for those people. They get called at 2 a.m. in the morning, 3 a.m. in the morning, anything happens. Oh, they call the unit manager, they call the DON. And as a unit manager, if someone calls out on your unit and there's nobody, they cannot get anybody, I'm sorry, you're going to have to go in. If it's at night, you're with your, your, your family at home, there's nobody to work night shift on your unit, it's your responsibility to go and work that, that night. If you come into work in the morning, you're out of your shut off staff, then you have to work. I was just like, this is, this is, so if you keep having to step in, when do you do your work because your work is still there waiting for you and don't get me wrong they were also i also saw unit managers that were very very lazy i mean very lazy they don't want to do anything they will beg for someone to come work so that they won't and they are not people that they are not hands-on as a nurse educator i did not mind people getting me i'm someone that always likes to work like you will not i will not be sloppy with my work with my job you will not find me sloppy so you will not get me if it's because of my job you're not gonna get me because i do my job because i know the culture so i always make sure that i did my job and not only doing my job i did my job well so i had a lot of people that were sent to me for training um, just because of the way I do my work, they will send a lot of people to come train with me before they actually start working on their own. I started as a nursing assistant. I'm not going to walk by the unit and I see a patient that needs water and I go out and look for someone to give the patient water. That's nonsense. Okay. I'm going to give that patient water. If I'm there and I'm walking by and I see a patient that really, really want to go to the bathroom. I will put that patient in the bathroom. When I was a wound nurse, I go in there and someone needs to be changed. I will change that patient, okay? Because of the way I am, the way I worked, I should say, I did not have issues with people. They liked me because I'm very helpful. If nurses are draining, getting drained behind, they will come. They knew that they could come to me and then ask me for help. I was the go-to person for IV. Just because when I when I started as an LPN, the nursing home that I worked for will actually train you as an LPN to put IV in, in their nursing homes. Doesn't mean that when you leave that nursing home that you're able to go put IV in any other, no. They only train you for their facilities. So I was very good. I, I, I enjoyed I, I enjoyed learning. So I went for that class. It was like a three-day class. At the end, you have to insert an IV and get certified. So when I got in the unit, I made sure that I announced to everybody, if you need IV, call Andy. Andy just finished IV class. I need to learn. So they called me. So I got used to that and I got so good at it because I, I get kept going with people that don't want to put IV for their patient. Oh, the doctor has put in an order for IV. Oh, I don't, they don't want to do it. They call in. No worries. Andy will do it. And I got good doing that. So even when I became a nurse educator, infection control nurse, and I transitioned to a different clinic, I mean, a different nursing home, um, I still told them, if you need help with IV, call me. Even now, when my patients come, if I want to look at their legs and I take off their socks and I'm looking at it and they t they have tape uh, stockings on and I take it off, they put them like, they're like, you really know how to do that? I'm like, girl, I used to work in a nursing home. I have this packed down, right? When I was, uh, when you're a nursing assistant, one of the skills you had to pass was <laughs> putting on test stockings. Girl, I know how to put that thing. Um, so, yeah, they're like, oh my God, you know? I say, yeah, I don't, I don't want to lose my skills. If I have to do it, I will do it. I think the culture in the nursing home, I don't know if it's changed. It's a really toxic one. And um, it's really, really hard on the staff. So when, when they walk short and they're overwhelmed, then it bounces off on the patients. And the patients, you know, end up not being taken care of the way they should. And they have this thing when the state is coming, everything has to be clean. No, if you're doing everything right every single day, when the state is coming, you don't have to worry about it. I don't know. This is kind of just a, I don't know what kind of video this is. You guys, <laughs> I don't know if it even makes sense to you guys, but please, if you work in this country, 
Let me know your experience. Do you work in a nursing home? Do you work in a hospital? Let me know your experience. And if you don't work here, you work in Ghana, Cameroon, wherever you are, can you tell me what the policies are like? How many patients do you get in a day? I remember when I went to Nigeria and I took my dad, I wanted my dad um, to be checked out and I took him, I wasn't a nurse practitioner then, um, I was a nurse and I was, I was, I was an infection control nurse then and I took my dad to the general hospital to be checked and I cannot tell you how many times I cringed and I wanted to do everything right right i did not want to bypass i did not want to pay or bribe to do anything so i went just me and my dad and we got in the line and we sat down we registered i did everything i mean i went to all the departments i went to i went for blood work i went for ultrasound i went for um x-ray like they sent me to the different parts of the hospital. Like I spent my entire day at the hospital and I cannot tell you how many, I, I saw people that will come in and because they know somebody, hey, come doctor, I will see you. And I'm just sitting there patiently and I'm just waiting and I'm just thinking like something, this is just, this is not how it should be done. Um, yeah. And every time, like when, when they went to take blood from him, oh, I cringed, I cringed. When they pulled that cotton board from the whole pile of cotton board and they take the alcohol, the, the spirit, and they put it in, I'm like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And he's fine. Nothing happened to him. I had to tell myself, Andy, you don't work here. This is how it's done over here. If you did not come with him and he would have gone by himself, this is what would have happened. So it's a lesson for you. You're going to watch how things are done and you're going to comply with the way things are done. And that's it. And that's what I did. I, I watched. I never told them I was a nurse. I never said a word. I just stood there and I watched the nurses. I sat there. They drew the blood. Then he, she, he went, I went in with him, saw the doctor, they asked questions, did everything. She ordered the scans and everything, now ordered the medications. I went to the pharmacy, paid for the medication. I did the whole nine yards. Going back, will I go? would I go to the general hospital? I don't think so. I wanted that experience and I saw it. And... I really hope in the future that thing changes and I really hope to contribute to positive changes. So I'm praying every day that God gives us the grace to do more because I feel like when God sends you out to do something, there's a reason, okay? You just don't go and you take care of yourself. What happens to the people here? And my focus is children and widows. Um, you know, people that cannot afford, especially children that parents cannot afford good. <laughs> good health care. Um, yeah. And this is where this video ends. I have no idea how we ended up <laughs> at this point, but... This is the freestyle. I don't even know what I'm going to call this video. Until my next video, I love you with the love of God. Bye.